Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new toy room. It's still nowhere near complete. I have things all over the place. It's like, it looks like a tornado went in here, but at least I have one wall in the back here that looks somewhat organized. Lots of things to celebrate lately. It was my birthday recently, moved to a new house. Um, I hit 50,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which is amazing. And I also got this fantastic Spinosaurus statue from W Dragon in the mail and I'm so excited. So a giant dinosaur sized thank you to W Dragon for sending this guy over for me to review for you all today because online this guy looked super duper impressive. So this my friends is the 1 to 35 scale Spinosaurus model by W Dragon and if you haven't already noticed it is indeed modeled and painted after the Jurassic Park 3 animatronic Spinosaurus created by Stan Winston Studios. The process behind the construction of the Spinosaurus in the third installment of Jurassic Park was such a gargantuan task but at least they had already gone through the process of bringing to life a dinosaur. Stan Winston Studios created this 12-ton monstrosity from their Spinosaurus maquette, and W Dragon has scaled down their animatronic beast to bring you this manageable sized version that you don't have to take the roof off of your house to accommodate. It comes in this cardboard box with an x-ray sticker of the Spinosaurus to the side and this writing on the side here which I am not fluent in. So opening this up we have here a large card of some Spinosaurus concept art, which I believe is actually by Crash McCreary. And here is our Spinosaurus. Oh my gosh, look at him. He looks so freaking cool. It's like he came right out of the movie. Okay, he's got a little weight to him too. I thought he'd be much lighter, but he definitely has a little bit of weight. Um, but this looks exactly like the Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus. <laughs> wow. And here's our base plate down below. So before we take a closer look at all this awesomeness, let's take some measurements, shall we? The Spinosaurus is approximately 17 inches long and about eight and a half inches high, with the base plate being around eight inches long long and about three and a half inches wide. And here is a coffee cup for a size comparison, a pen, and a battery. Now, like I said, this guy does have a little bit of weight to him. He's made with a combination of both resin and PVC. Its body and tail are made out of vinyl, his head and hands out of PVC, which I believe is a type of vinyl, while its legs are made out of resin to prevent any deformation from heat, allowing the model to stand perfectly on the base, which is a really nice feature. And let's see if we can hear the difference in the material. So let's take a look at this guy right off the bat. The paint job is very impressive. And I kind of noticed that depending on how you shine the light on it, it kind of changes color a little bit. In person, he looks a little bit more like muddy brown and such, but on the camera, he kind of comes across as almost kind of greeny gray brown, but he's much more kind of saturated in real life. So we do have this base tone of muddy brown getting lighter as we go towards the belly with accents of reddish brown and white stripe patterns in areas. We can even see some high highlights of a lighter brown on the sides of the tail and in other areas of the body, and also some dark striping on the legs, which I think is really cool. Really like those stripes. And at the top, of course, we have our sail with all sorts of colors in there to really pop and accentuate those spines sprouting from the back, like white, blue, and some red here and there at the tips, which actually goes along the entire back with this ridged detail. And at the base of the sail, we have this sort of elongated armor plated scale pattern running down each side of the back. Okay, one thing I really, really have to comment on is that they did such a good job at hiding the seams on this figure. It almost looks like it was cast as one piece because they did such a good job. But if you look hard enough, you can see the effort they went to to hide the seams. Generally, figures and models are made from a few separate pieces and then they're glued together. Sometimes a seam is very apparent at the attachment site or the paint is not really blended that well together because sometimes they're painted separately. On each of the legs at the top of the thigh here, you can see they made an effort to seal the seams and blended the paint over top so well that it's virtually impossible to see the seam unless you are super close to it. I did notice that in the earlier prototype images of this figure, it had more of this white crackling detail pattern 
um, on the body and the reddish browns were a little bit more saturated. And as cool as that initial paint job looked, I think the paint scheme they ultimately decided on is definitely more realistic looking. But the animatronic Spinosaurus in the movie does appear to have some of this crackling pattern. So I think it would have been nice if they maybe added a little bit of that subtle white crackling effect to the model at least because it's a really kind of intricate looking paint job um, of that crackling effect. And I think it kind of would have taken the paint job to that extra level. Next, let's look at this sculpt job. I think they hit the nail right on the head in terms of the sculpt work. This model looks like it came right off the screen. The proportions look great, that bipedal stance, the pose, the muscle detail. We can see those muscular calves, powerful thunder thighs here, and this tail is a muscle powerhouse right here. Look at that tail. We have this, you know, crisscross scale pattern in areas like the tail and the feet. And then we see around the thighs and the head, we have this more individually sculpted kind of scale pattern look, which is really nice. Really great fold work here on the neck, around the stomach and on the feet. They definitely did not chintz out on the leg and foot detail like I know some models do. Very, very nice dark striping and highlights on these. They're very detailed. Love the folding and the wrinkling uh, for his stance. And the claws are also individually painted as well. And same with the hand claws. And let's take a look at that head. I don't think you can get any more true to the original Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. It almost looks like a carbon copy and it looks freaking, freaking awesome. We have this long crocodilian-like head with a mouth full of conical off-white teeth. Beautiful, beautiful painting on these teeth, by the way. Virtually no bleeding into the gum line, which is really impressive. And the jaw is not articulated. It is stationary, but we do have some very nice detail and gloss on those flesh-colored flaps on the sides of the jaw and on the tongue. On the roof of the mouth, we have some detail in there and gloss. And a really cool feature of this guy is actually a little bit of a throat. When you look at him, it's this dark tunnel. But when you shine a light in there, you can see that it does go back actually pretty far. All the individual little scales and the larger scales at the base of the head. I always loved that armor plated look. And underneath here, we have the ears and of course the nostrils on the top with that protruding ridge here beside the eye. And take a look at that piercing green dragon eye that looks right through your soul. It's judging you right now. That green looks so electric against the brown. They even added a few faint specks of white in there, if you can see. And we even have some nice bags here under the eye. And the eye does have some gloss to it as well. One thing I would have liked to see with the eye is perhaps the green color taking up the entire space of the eye. But you know, with that darker brown um, reserved for around the eye on this model, that green really has no trouble popping. Lastly, let's take a look at that stand. This guy can stand without his base, but this guy, like I said, has a bit of weight to him. So I wouldn't want him falling over or anything. Our base plate seems to be a very wet, muddy, rocky terrain with some rock texturing and different tones of brown in there and underneath we have this felt material which is a nice touch. What's really cool is that there's not only giant Spinosaurus footprints in the wet mud but also some other smaller footprints leading us to believe that the Spinosaurus is perhaps on the trail of another dinosaur perhaps? Under one of his feet is a tiny hole which matches up with a metal peg on the base plate. On my guy you have to kind of twist and put a little bit of pressure to get him into his peg but he stands perfectly with no issue in his footprints on the base. And here is our lovely Spinosaurus in all their Spinosaurus glory. So a few little nitpicks that I have with this statue. I would have liked to see that intricate white crackling pattern that we saw in the original prototype. I think just a hint of that would have brought the already awesome paint job to another level. And I also think that the whole eye should have been painted green instead of just that smaller iris area. One thing I'm a little disappointed of is when statues don't have any official markings or anything like a company name and the year. So it would have been great if this thing had, you know, W Dragon 2019 written on it somewhere. Heck, even a sticker would have been okay if you didn't want to go through the effort to kind of brand anything. But sometimes things get, you know, lost in the mix. A couple years go by, it doesn't have its box, it doesn't have any papers or anything. And it'd be nice to just kind of look underneath and go, oh, W Dragon 2019. That's where that's from. So I'm not too sure if that was like a company decision, if they wanted to kind of like outsource these things, then people put their own brands on it or something. But it just would have been nice to have some sort of markings on it. Even a sticker would have been okay. But apart from those things, I'm super, super impressed with the Spinosaur statue. You know, if you're a fan of Jurassic park, let alone a dinosaur fan in general, this is just a wicked, wicked piece for your collection. So let's compare him to some other dinosaurs. We have the 2001 Postable Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus. This guy is notorious for looking like a duck. <laughs> and this is the 2001 animatronic Spinosaurus. I think these were pretty well done in terms of their paint job. 
knobs as well as their rubber real feel textures back in the day. I really, really love these toys. And here is the PNSO Spinosaurus that I just recently reviewed. The PNSO model is based on the latest scientific data and modeled after a much more realistic depiction, while the W Dragon Spinosaurus is obviously a depiction of what most of us think when we hear the word Spinosaurus. Instantly, we think of Jurassic Park 3. But which one do you prefer? the traditional Jurassic Park Spinosaurus, or something based on a more realistic aquatic look. So if any of you are interested in purchasing the Spinosaurus statue by W Dragon, you can find him in a few places. You can find him on Amazon for about 119 US dollars or on eBay for $99 currently on sale. I'll also leave links down below to W Dragon's Facebook site so you can see all the awesome pieces they have come out with and are in the works. And once again, a giant thank you to W Dragon for sending over this Jurassic Park 3 inspired Spinosaurus to review with you all because I really like it. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I come up with new videos every week. Come check me on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay legendary. Bye -bye.